Hello friends, I welcome you to this new session on basic course of real estate project registration in Mahareda. We started the session on 10th of June 2024 and we will be ending after 22 sessions. Today you have a presenter who will take up the issues and then a question answer will be there at the end. This session we had to organize because we were receiving a lot of requests across India from the chartered accountant who are want to enter into the new area of practice to start this basic course so that they can enter into the advanced courses. We have conducted n number of advanced RERA courses, number of books on RERA has been done and cooperatives, redevelopment, uh, GST, income tax, NPO, cooperatives, so many programs have been done. So this is the opportunity for you to comment, give us the suggestion so that we can do the course. Similarly, we have also agreed to take up so many courses physical at different places, uh, residential programs. So whatever you want, if we get more than 20 to 25 participants, we will be happy to host that program. Our aim is to empower each one of you to enter into area of practice and wherever you get difficulties, we are there to help you. Today we are on the 13th session of our paid basic RERA course of Maharashtra. We are going to cover the significant case laws which have gone to Supreme Court also and significant judgments which are pertaining to registration. Uh, these judgments are fully not pertaining to uh, registration. These will be covering a little bit uh, outside of registration process also. But these are few judgments, you know, which every person who is practicing into RERA should be aware of. They are very important and significant judgments. Uh, these are the landmark judgments in the RERA matter also. So we have with us advocate uh, Partha Sati sir. Uh, who has been practicing into RERA litigations, complaints, uh, appellate tribunal also. Uh, he has, he is the vice chairman of Mahaseva and he has been, uh, you know, delivering lectures on various other topics related to complaint, uh, redressal and uh, various forums. So I welcome Partha Sardi sir uh, to this platform. Just to give you a brief, so uh, to, in today's session, we'll be covering two to three, at least uh, two to three significant uh, judgments. One, of course, is the most uh, important one, which is the Neil Kamal Realtors uh, judgment. More than 300 page judgment. But of course, we will not be able to cover the whole judgment in today's one last time. We will cover the most important aspects as well as much more pertaining towards the registration process. After that, of course, the second one is the New Tech Realities uh, uh, significant judgment. Another significant judgment in case uh, in the, um, uh, the whole process of registration of RERA. And... Uh, Lastly, there's one more high court judgment, uh, which uh, is extremely important in terms of registration that even if in case the project is not registered, the, comp uh, the, comp uh, the RERA authority should hear the complaints and address them as a source complaint. So today we'll be dealing with all these judgments. And if in case during this session, if you all have, you all also have any kind of queries regarding this uh, judgment, if you all have any kind of queries, you all can definitely ask us in the chat box because Advocate S. Patha Sati sir has been into this practice. So he'll be the best person to, you know, give any kind of tips and how to understand the, uh, the judgment also. If you all have any kind of queries in that regard, you can definitely ask here. Uh, so with this, uh, Partha sir, I hand over the mic to you. You can just take uh, just a brief about this whole ju uh, the judgments, give a brief about the facts and then how uh, it impacted the uh, RERA law as such. And how significant were these case laws? Like what was the outcome of it? How has it improved the whole process of RERA registration as well as the RERA law in general? If you can give us a brief and then you can just elaborate more. I hand over the mic to you sir and you can take forward from here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Shresh. Thanks a lot. And thanks for the kind words. Uh, welcome each one of you to today's uh, session, uh, which is actually titled as landmark judgments, not only of the Supreme Court, but the other uh, courts of our uh, country and uh, most importantly as uh, we are more or less present in the state of Maharashtra and more confined to the city of Mumbai and uh, under the jurisdiction of the Honorable Bombay High Court, uh, there is one Bombay High Court judgment which we will be discussing. Besides that, the most, uh, the as far as the RERA Act is concerned, the RERA Act uh, in the year 2017, once it was enacted and in the, uh, the state of Maharashtra being the uh, pioneer here, the first state to enact the uh, particular act and frame the rules thereof. So 2016 is the 
actual enactment, the central enactment, and Maharashtra was the first state to actually enforce the act from 1st May 2017. So, as we are all aware that any kind of a statute, any legislature which comes into force in our country, the first and foremost thing, not only as a professional, but also as a person, as a citizen of the country and a person who is more inclined towards uh, challenging the constitutional validity. Now, it's a very common word which is used, uh, a nomenclature which is used that if any act is been introduced or enacted, then the first and foremost thing is to test the validity, the constitutional validity of that particular act because all of us know very well that constitution is the mother of all acts. So, whatever we are deriving out, whatever acts are being enacted, all of them fall out from the main act which is the constitution of our country. So, at any point in time, whenever the provision of any of the act, if there is any kind of a uh, ambiguity or if, if there is a need to challenge the constitutionality itself, then obviously there are two constitutional courts which we approach. One is obviously the uh, Supreme Court of our country, the Supreme Court of India under Article 32 and uh, the other courts are the high courts of each and every state which we can approach under Article 226-227. Now, the same case, the same situation arose when RERA was introduced. As I mentioned, after 2017, 1st May 2017 and more particularly in so far as the registration of the projects were concerned, the primary intention of enacting this particular legislature was to maintain a transparency in the real estate sector, which was not so much regulated, which was not actually having a confined set of rules and regulations. So, the act was enacted basically to bring such kind of activities into an ambit wherein the entire sector is properly regulated. So, that is the reason why it is called as Real Estate Regulation Act. The RERA is Real Estate Regulation and Development as well. So, while you regulate, you also, in most of the uh, enactments which you see of late, uh, the word development is also included. So, that there is a positivity, there is a positive feeling of why this particular act has been enacted. For that matter, any kind of, even if you see the development control rules, it is not now known as a development control rule, it is known as development control and promotion rules. So, a term like a development or a promotion, all such terms are being included because to show the positivity, to show the positive intent rather. So, similarly, the RERA estate, Real Estate Regulatory Act, the foremost and the most important aspect of this particular legislature was to bring into ambit all those projects which did not have the completion certificate or the occupancy certificate on 1st May and I am talking about the case of uh, the state of Maharashtra where it was enacted the first. So, on the 1st of May 2017, all those projects which did not have its completion certificate or the occupancy certificate were required to be registered under the statute. So, there was a regulatory authority which was established as far as the regulatory act is concerned and after the establishment of the regulatory authority, the, after the setup of the regulatory authority, the projects which were ongoing, they were categorized as ongoing projects, projects which did not receive its CC or OC. CC is completion, let us not get confused with commencement. CC is completion certificate or occupancy certificate. Depending upon the jurisdiction, the area, the municipality under which the project or the land lies, there is either an occupancy certificate granted or a completion certificate which is granted. So, both were included. And those projects which did not have their completion had to be compulsorily registered under the Act as an ongoing project. Hence came into picture Chapter 2 of our RERA Act which talks about registration of a real estate project. So, as I mentioned, on 1st of May till the 31st of July, the three-month window was given to all the projects, ongoing projects which did not have its occupancy certificate to voluntarily come and register themselves. So, this was a voluntary registration, though it was mandatory, but it was voluntary as well. So, there was no checks 
from or the uh, kind of uh, in any kind of uh, scrutiny which was happening to projects because we all know that there are a lot of projects across the country and across the state of maharashtra so it will be humanly impossible for the authority of or any other person to track the projects which were ongoing so that was precisely the reason that this act itself had the provision that it has to be voluntary disclosure so all the ongoing projects which did not have the cc had to voluntary come the promoter of the project promoters are those persons who either construct or who cost to construct that project so i am not going into the details of a, a declared uh, deri- uh, of a pro- promoter definition of a promoter but promoters were required to register the project which were ongoing and they were given the 3 month time so within this 3 month time any project wherein the project required any kind of a marketing or a sale or any kind of an advertisement activity without prior registration with this particular authority under the act these projects none of the flats or units in those particular projects could have been advertised or could have been sold there was no financial transaction could happen in those projects which were not registered so section 3 of rera talks about prior registration of project uh, of a real estate project these projects were called as real estate projects under rera and a 3 month period within 31st july they had to get registered now there is there was an application which was to be submitted to the rera authority for registration of the project there is an application for registration which is covered under section 4 of the act so section 4 section 3 talks about the prior registration the requirements of registration why a project should be registered what are the uh, other documents to be submitted so on and so forth and section 4 talks about the actual application the format under which the entire project details are to be submitted and they have to be submitted to the rera authority after which scrutiny will happen there and after proper and regular scrutiny if the project is found to be registrable then the authority will register the project one of the main uh, called uh, you may call it as the requirement the primary requirement for any project to be registered in so far as the state of at least the maharashtra state is concerned the authority had as the cc or the oc was required for not registration if the project would have obtained its completion certificate or occupancy certificate they were not required to be registered but there was also a condition pre condition for registering the project so this pre condition was that the project should have obtained the commencement certificate so once you get your commencement certificate in place once the commencement certificate has been obtained from the competent authority then only the particular you reach that stage of registering that project so this was the pre condition so projects which did not have the commencement certificate or in cases where the commencement certificate had lapsed because the once you obtain a commencement certificate the validity of that commencement certificate is only for one year within which you have to actually commence that particular whatever commencement permission has been given you have to commence that you have to start you have to begin that construction so if you are not begun within that particular one year then the commencement certificate automatically will lapse so you have to reapply and again uh, apply for a commencement and get a commencement certificate from the authorities but i just want to uh, ask one question regarding this yeah. uh, this commencement would like that you mentioned that uh, whenever you obtain it you within one year you have to start the project right is there like anything uh, like any definition of the start of the project like is it uh, you know re- removal of the members from the society like if it's a normal redevelopment or is it uh, getting the iod cc then is it co- uh, considered as a start of the project what is the definition of year in the start of the project yeah so now before obtaining the commencement certificate in case of uh, say a city like mumbai or mmr region there is some there is something called as obtaining a intimation of approval so the approval of the plans and uh, the intimation of approval is nothing but it will give you the entire list of stages wherein which has to be accomplished by the developer or the promoter before which the permission for commencement would be granted to that particular project now the iod will have lot of conditions ioa will have lot of conditions so once you fulfill those conditions then your plans 
the iod plans there are some plans which are also submitted along with the uh, application so those plans will get approved and once those plans get approved you pay the whatever premiums towards purchase of your uh, tdr fsi yes, yes. and other your deficiency premiums and all those things as per what the plans have been submitted and on the day when you apply and you start the process of development in that particular project that is called as the commencement of that particular project understood so if if that particular project did not have its commencement certificate again the authority was not registering those projects because commencement was the stage at which you could probably define when the project could get completed so if you do not have the commencement at all and you do not have the permission to construct a particular number of floors then obviously you are left in the dark as to how and when and up to which floor which stage or what what kind of project is going to come up at the time there is no start of the project you cannot define the end of the project it's like that exactly exactly the start has to be there so that defend definition of the end of the project may not be directly related to the commencement certificate exactly. but at the same time courts have ruled that once the project has begun and the commencement has been granted then within a reasonable period of time you have to complete that project so the the start point is always the commencement iod would have been received but unless and until you receive commencement the project is technically a non starter and so that's the reason precisely that uh, rera has told that once you receive the commencement you approach us you declare all the details as per the commencement and your iod and other things your title of the land everything all legal documentations will be uploaded as i told you it's a voluntary uh, kind of a registration so the developer uploads all these documents and then defines that project and on that day when he applies for the commencement as i told you the scrutiny will happen and a registration number will be granted to that particular project so the particular project will be given a registration number project registration number so many of us are a bit confused uh, whether the registration number has been granted to the developer or to the project so we have to remember in our mind that registration is always to a project and not to the developer or his company every project will have its own independent identity as a registration number it is not that uh, uh, xyz company will have its registration it is the project which will have its registration so each and every project will be granted the registration and this grant of registration is prescribed under section 5 of the rera act so section 5 talks about how the authority will scrutinize your documents and after scrutinizing how they grant the uh, particular registration of that particular project now once the registration is granted obviously then all commercial activities can take place in that particular project wherein booking of the flats collecting money opening of your designated account collecting money 70 30 your option of uh, all, all those things will be applicable from that day and it is also mentioned clearly that once the project is registered under the authority then all the provisions of the act are applicable to that particular project till the time it is not registered it may or it may not be applicable because there is a bit of an ambiguity in the act as well it does not talk it it only says real estate project it does not say registered real estate project the beginning of the act says real estate project so real estate projects can also be un- non registered real estate or unregistered real estate project for which we will we'll also be going through one of the judgments wherein uh, what the high courts have ruled regarding unregistered uh, real estate project but the the crux is once the registration is completed the project has obtained its registration number then all the commercial and other activities development activities in the project can begin so that is the start point of the actual commercialization of the particular project now section 6 is the next section which talks about extension now as i told you while registering the project with the authority there are various declarations which the promoter is supposed to put it on the public domain because this is going to be a public domain going to be visible because the main purpose was to get in transparency so anybody and everybody across the globe who or wants to have a look at any of the project can just punch in the project registration number and have a view of the entire page whatever has been declared by the promoter so in that a very important aspect there are three or four documents which are most important like i mentioned about the iod the cc the title of that land all those things obviously are important the structure of the company the promoter individual details projects completed projects and all those things but a very very important aspect of this registration lies 
in the completion date of that particular project. So as uh, Shreyas was asking the question of uh, the, def the definition of a completion date will obviously be calculated from the, uh, from the day when the commencement was obtained and the project was registered. So even the Supreme Court has held in many judgments that projects which have begun also need to be completed in a reasonable period of time, which they have stated as three to four years, depending upon the size of the project. And hence, the completion date becomes very important as far as the RERA website is concerned. So all these things are uploaded on the RERA website. So through the website, we understand the promoter was at the time of registering the project. He was granted a liberty at the first instance. Say, for example, a project which was ongoing on the date of registering the project as on 1st May 2017. Prior to that, RERA was not there. So the developer was constructing as per what the local laws were. For example, it was constructed under the Maharashtra Ownership Flat Act and the agreement for sale was also uh, executed as per the MOFA Act. So during that MOFA regime, the promoter would have actually uh, in the agreement for sale mentioned an X date of possession, X date of completion of that project. And that completion date on the date of registration, that is on the 1st of May 2017, the project obviously was not complete and hence he had to register the project. So in the agreement for sale, if he would have suppose written the possession date as say 31st December 2018 and now, now that he is compulsorily required to register the project with an authority and he feels that Mofa may I was able to do this because there was no regulation. If I did not complete the project even on 31st December 2018, there are some provisions, some penalties are there, but to enforce those penalties, it is a long drawn process. It was a civil dispute and, and the, the home buyers, the purchasers had to uh, have be drawn on a very long uh, legal battle. Now that RERA has come in, RERA also realized, the government also realized, the legislature also realized that there has to be some equity granted to the developer. So while registering the project, though the registration on the agreement for sale, the position date in the registered agreement for sale was showing as December 2018, 31st December 2018. But a one time liberty was given to all the promoters that they could have declared another date besides that particular date so that two dates were available on the day when the projects were registered. Of course, if the project was not completed, we are talking about ongoing projects only. So if the promoter still felt that he could have completed the project or he shall complete the project by 31st December 2018, he can stick to that particular date or else if due to the various provisions and penalties available under the act, if he felt that no, he needs another year's extension and he will just declare December 31st December 2019 as the possession date, completion date, then he had the liberty to declare both the dates. So the first date which was declared during the registration is the proposed date of completion and the second date which was allowed by the RERA authority is called as the revised proposed date of completion. So the proposed date in this particular case would be 31st December 2018 and another extended or the revised proposed completion date would be 31st December 2019. So this is the time at the time on the date when he registered the project. So extension of this particular date. I am talking more precisely on section 6 now. Section 6 talks about extension of the project. Now if the project on 31st December 2019 is, was also not complete or if the uh, promoter is of the opinion that in the month of uh, August or September 2019 he feels that probably he may not be able to complete the project before 31st uh, December 2019 then he has the option there are two options available. We will come to the second option afterwards. First option is the option available with the authority wherein if the project does not, is not completed rather on that particular day, then the registration of the project can be revoked. Revocation of registration is provided under section 7 of the act wherein if the project even on 2000, December 31st, December 2019, if the project is not complete, does not have its completion certificate or the occupancy certificate. Obviously, the RERA authority after giving notice, obviously giving a principle of natural justice can revoke the registration of that particular project and that from that particular day, 
the project is dead there is the project shall not be live it, more, the details won't be visible on the rara website and all other things may proceed like blacklisting the developer and not allowing him to continue in other projects and all those things we are not going into the details of that so seven is the revocation of the registration due to the default of the promote now but as i mentioned all the acts will also give a provision a parallel provision wherein if something can be revoked it can also be extended so what happens is there is an extension of registration which is also there what happens in, in case of section 6 as i told you section 7 is revocation but coming back to section 6 so section 6 states that the promoter can apply to the authority for extension of the registration from say 31st december 2019 up to a maximum of 1 year so section 6 talks about extending the project to a maximum of 1 year but there is a caveat there is a clause which is given there which if you properly read it is only stating that due to force major conditions the section 6 is basically was brought in not to give a blanket permission to the promoter for extending it even for 1 year because he had already been given the option of uh, giving a or declaring a date which was the revised proposed date so he could have given that revised proposed date by calculating at what period he would have completed the project but he failed to do that so he has failed in this particular uh, duty and hence this particular one year extension was also granted only to because of some force major condition unforeseen circumstances but normally if you see the authorities do not they are not very strict about extending the registration under this particular section and they do extend the registration because at the end of the day it is the authorities who are going to suffer if the registration is revoked so keeping that in mind and uh, either it is revoked or it is extended so now the last one the last section section 8 regarding the registration what happens if the project registration is revoked or lapsed so in case of the registration being lapsed the project the first right of refusal to take over the project lies with the allottees of that project so the allottees of the project allottees are no one but the home buyers the purchasers who are the uh, allottees of that particular project those are the people who shall decide on the future course of action what is going to happen to that particular project and then if they are able to take over the project and complete it well and good or they shall decide on change of promoter any other promoter can be brought in to complete that project so those things will happen under section 8 or if that is also not going to happen then through rera the government will intervene and the government will take over the project for its completion this is what is given in the section 8 of the act now this is about the statute the act the provisions of the act similarly if you talk about the rules there is rule 6 for grant of registration rule 7 for extension and rule 8 for revocation so this is just a mention rule 6 rule 7 and rule 8 of maharara rules which talk about grant extension and revocation of the registration rules are basically nothing but the formats and the different uh, uh, procedures of how to uh, complete this particular aspects now coming to the judgments judgment part of it now let me deal with the first judgment which talks about the as i as i mentioned that any project which now was not complete on 1st of may 2017 had to be registered now that some promoters did not register their projects they failed to register for whatever reasons and they told that Uh, i will not register it let us see what what the government does or what rara does so in that case what happened as the act says that all the provisions of the act will be applicable on registered projects it indirectly meant that the provisions will not be applicable if the project is not registered so there there was a catch catch 22 situation the allottees in that project now were unable to approach the rara authority to raise any kind of a complaints or any grievance against that unregistered project the project is not registered i am unable to approach the authority now they tried to do that many of the allottees wrote to the authority approached the authority they went physically there they tried to meet the secretary chairman other officials government nothing could happen because the act was not supporting actually it was not supporting them so now what happened is then some of the allottees approached the supreme court now through a writ petition as i mentioned we can always approach the high court for any kind of a violation of our rights legal rights or our constitutional rights so these allottees set of allottees approached the high court high court of bombay the citation name i will just uh, quote here it is mohammed zain khan versus 
Maharashtra Real Estate Regulatory Authority and others with a lodging number of 908 of 2018. So this particular writ petition was lodged in the Honorable High Court and High Court actually gave directions and during that particular hearing, what actually transpired in that hearing was uh, the whatever the petitioner explained to the High Court that they are unable to raise complaints and file uh, any any kind of grievance on the portal. So Maharera actually admitted the real estate regulator actually admitted the fact that they do not have a provision for entertaining complaints which for projects which are not registered. So High Court directed Maharera that they should also now try to incorporate a particular kind of a system, a software which will admit all unregistered projects so that those unregistered projects shall also be brought into the ambit of RERA. RERA will direct them to register the project first and uh, whatever necessary steps, penalties will be adopted. And then once the project gets registered, then obviously all the provisions of the act are applicable to them. So this is a landmark judgment wherein which made it, uh, which necessitated the RERA authority to explore their software and uh, introduce the system of uh, even filing complaints against unregistered projects. Now the second judgment, which obviously is the most important uh, as far as the various uh, provisions of registrations are concerned. This is uh, the uh, landmark judgment in the case of Neil Kamal Realtors, which we all know the judgment which is uh, used in most of our arguments in various courts regarding the entire constitutional validity of the RERA Act, which was discussed and as Shreyas mentioned, it's a 333 page judgment. Uh, this particular judgment was pronounced with the Bombay High Court on the directions given by the Supreme Court of India, wherein many of the states were facing such problems. Many high courts were uh, already they were filled with many such petitions. And the Supreme Court decided that all these petitions should be clubbed. And the Bombay High Court was given the responsibility of deciding this uh, particular petition. So this can also be treated as a judgment of the indirectly a judgment of the Supreme Court because this was done on the directions of the Supreme Court. So if you see most of the whatever we discussed about the registration of the project, when, what, who should be registered, wh what is the role of the promoter, what is the role of the allotty in an unregistered project. I am not going into the details because we are short of time actually. But this particular judgment, the Neil Kamal Realtors judgment, I will also quote the uh, citation of this particular judgment. This is again a writ petition of writ petition number 2727 of 2017, lodging number 306 of 2017. Chamber summons. This was actually through a chamber summons. The chamber summons number, logic number is 306 of 2017 and the writ petition number is 2727 of 2017. So this was the writ petition which was there, which was presented and uh, Neil Kamal Realtors was one of the uh, re respondent or one of the promoters in this project. On base, There were a lot of uh, other uh, Alwatis, other companies, other respondent promoters, many of them were included in this if you see the entire uh, petition and the common order was passed and uh, all those sections starting from the first section to the last section of RERA, all these sections were deliberated and all this section it was each and every section was explained properly by the High Court and the constitutional validity of why registration is required, whether it is against uh, the fundamental rights whether registration is compulsory, all those things were discussed and everything were explained clearly. So this Neil Kamal judgment is not only useful for the registration purposes, but this is a landmark judgment which can be used for each and every aspect when we argue before the RERA, even, even before the High Courts and Supreme Courts. So uh, Parthasha, yes. if, if I am correct, uh, in this 330 page judgment, it is not just covering registration, like you mentioned, it is covering all the sections and it is challenging all the sections, all the 92 sections which is there in the act, right? Exactly, exactly. So the constitutional validity of the entire act was challenged. challenged. The uh, High Court came out with the justification of how this act is not uh, adverse. It has taken care of the, it has, it has brought out not only the various provisions in the proper manner, it has interpreted the provisions not only in the proper manner, but also brought out the intent of the legislature of why this act was enacted, why this particular legislature was enacted. So this is a very landmark judgment which every, everybody should read at least once the entire judgment. The third judgment relates to again the Supreme Court of India wherein there was an appeal which was filed, a special leave petition was filed 
by a company called Newtech Promoters. Newtek Promoters and Developers is a UP based uh, development promoter company uh, during which uh, there were again some uh, some of the sections uh, like section 18 uh, then the the difference between the authority and the adjudicating officer and obviously the registration part also so these three main features of the rera act were again challenged by the uh, promoter new tech promoters and uh, this landmark judgment also i'll uh, through an slp i'll quote the slp number as well uh, the civil application numbers are 6745 to 6749 of 2021 civil application number civil appeal numbers sorry 6745 672 up to 6749 of 2021 which arise out of a special leave petition number civil special leave petition civil numbers 3711 to 3715 so the civil appeals were before the honorable uh, high court of uttar pradesh and from there a special leave petition uh, was uh, filed and 3711 to 3715 of 2021 so even in that judgment you can see about uh, if you see para number 15 and uh, para number 38 it is all again talking about the registration of the project lapse of the registration revocation of registration and why and when and how the uh, registration project should be registered and when it should be revoked and whether some of the rights of the promoter or the allottee has been infringed everything is covered in detail in this particular they have also given what is the definition of a real estate project what is the definition of a promoter who is an allottee who have the rights why should a promoter register the project and all those things so they have actually entirely in fact in a miniature manner like how neil kamal dealt with the entire act this this also this particular judgment also dealt with many important features and many important uh, provisions of the act and hence we have a uh, landmark judgment in, in the name of neil kamal uh, sorry uh, new tech promoters and developers versus state of up and others state of up and others new, uh, new tech were the appellants and uh, it was against the uh, up era actually so up state of up and others they were the respondents so these three landmark judgments which are useful as far as uh, the project registrations are concerned. So you may please uh, refer these uh, judgments. And uh, I think most of the points are covered here as far as registration, unregistered project, requirement for registration, cancellation, deregistration, all these things are well covered in these uh, judgments. So I think with these three judgments, I think we'll be able to argue our matters in a better manner. And uh, I think uh, I'll end my session here there is one question which one of the members have asked so they are new into the practice of you know uh this litigation part the uh, handling the complaints and uh, hearings and all so now that of course these three judgment is something which is very important very significant which one has to go through one question which uh, the participant has asked is how do you read the judgment because the terms the the definitions the whole the summary of the whole judgment it becomes so technical and so dry like how as you as an advocate uh, how do you suggest we go about it while reading the judgment should we directly read the order or should we uh, go through all the facts like if neil kamal realtor is 330 page of judgment if we go line by line in one day it is not going to get completed and by the time uh, you start the next page tomorrow there is some other work which comes in and you are not able to complete the whole judgment so how do you address the situation when you are going through a judgment and new judgment also how do you tackle it yeah uh, to begin with i would say that time should never be a factor for not going through a judgment so that is the first thing Absolutely. so always we should have some time it's a we, we are then defeating our own purpose so if you need to go through a judgment obviously you have to devote time to that particular judgment as rightly stated by the participant judgments some of the judgments are not very easy to understand they go to the very root of the problem sometimes so but what i suggest my personal uh, opinion is before going through any judgment, we always need to first grab catch hold of the complaint or the application which has been filed before that particular court. If it is an appeal, again, we should not directly go and uh, just look at the uh, appeal because appeal is always challenging a particular order. Appeal is always never on facts. Appeal may be on facts, but the order is challenged here. We have to just think that we are 
in the in the complaint we are challenging the project as far as the real estate or uh, rera is concerned in a complaint we are challenging the project the registration and the promoter but in an appeal we are you have to see to it you have, you have to have an approach or an outlook that you are challenging the trial court judge you are you are challenging the order of the trial court judge so only those grounds on which you are going to challenge that particular order of the trial court you have to focus on those grounds not to go into the facts and other things again so that that may not matter much in the appeal so we have to just see the defect on the on the aggrieved part where we are personally aggrieved of that particular judgment of the trial court and then appeal to the appellate court but coming back to the point without going through the complaint without going to the initial document without studying the reply filed by the opposite party and the rejoinders and all submissions facts documents relied upon and they may they may have also annexed some of the judgments which they would have relied upon so it's it's an entire bunch it's, it's it cannot you cannot isolate any of these papers and you you may try to read it it has to be in totality entirety so you have to start from the scratch yes for beginners it may be very difficult i understand but once you have chosen this particular uh, profession there is no excuse for not having time or not understanding the it's it's a process so probably in the first 6 months you may not be able to understand much of the what are terms have been used here in the judgments but slowly and steadily you will be able to grasp it and i'm i'm sure that with entire dedication and focus on whatever things you are reading obviously all our professionals here so i don't see if a person is a chartered accountant then it's not it's it's just a matter of few days that he will understand a, a legal document so i th- i think uh, it should s- start from scratch and we should gradually proceed step by step so that we are able to understand the judgment properly definitely i think so yes like you have summarized uh, the judgment be it whatever kind of judgment if you do not know the basics of how, why this whole uh, order came into place why it became significant also basically not dealing with the facts of the matter but how the complaints and how the whole process of the whole uh, judgment what led to the judgment why the court gave the order we have to understand that so starting on the scratch is also very important uh, again few participants were asking the citation and everything which you have quoted if uh, you can just give the citation as well as the order if it's available uh, if you can just share it on the whatsapp group which is there it will be really helpful yeah, yeah. we will we'll, we'll surely share the citation we will surely share the order as well yes the order all these three orders which we have just discussed today we will share the entire order the ju- judgment rather and it will be very useful for you uh, for your practice as well as for your understanding the subject uh, thoroughly these okay. these three judgments at least nilkamal judgment uh, after that there has been there hasn't been any kind of a lendier judgment which has been given after 2018 so i think uh, nilkamal judgment would itself suffice for anybody it should be like a handbook for all of us to go through the various provisions of the act so we'll surely share those judgments with the participants this is my personal question to you that it's not like bombay high court almost every day there is some order which is given there is some judgment which is given what again this is a general question what defines a significant judgment what defines a landmark judgment from a normal judgment of course during our arguments and litigations whenever we are filing we give you know citations of various other judgments which are not that significant but we give it which is relevant to our topic but what makes a judgment significant like how do you define that the significant the whatever uh, adjective we may be using but a particular judgment if that particular judgment is apt and it can be relied upon by me in my argument and if i am able to uh, get the entire uh, whatever is expected out of the court if i am able to uh, convince the court that this particular judgment which was passed by an xyz court is on the same facts and the same grounds as what i am relying upon or what my complaint is so that judgment may become a landmark judgment for me it may not be a landmark for the other person but landmark judgments are basically those judgments which have been uh, there has been some special bench which has been constituted by the court or wherein it has been it, the judgment has dealt with a wide range of all provisions of a particular act or a particular subject matter and those judgments are uniformly av- applicable to most of the cases and they are reportable so these judgments generally become landmark judgments but as far as important judgments are concerned it depends on person to person there are how you actually uh, uh, locate identify those judgments which actually have to be re- relied upon and related to our particular uh, kind of a complaint 
so that if we are able to relate to that complaint and try to match and uh, explain the same to the judge then it becomes a very important judgment for me for myself so i think that is basically the difference so i think if if i am able to get out uh, by relying upon even a uh, judgment given by the rera trial court even if a rera trial court i am able to rely upon the judgment and i am able to convince the high court judge that this particular judgment was passed though passed by the rera trial court though the high court is not required to uh, totally uh, rely on that particular judgment but if the judge judge is convinced about the fact then it becomes a landmark judgment for me it's as simple as that i i i read it in that manner of course if in case some kind of judgment uh, which you know changes the whole course of the practice like uh, changes the whole thought process of the whole practitioners and everything newly practicing and if he comes across, uh, across such a, some judgment probably he is in that particular uh, crossroads whether to practice in rara or not for example now he uh, suddenly he comes across a very interesting judgment which he feels that acha aisa bhi judgment rara ke andar aa sakta and it is so interesting and if he understands the judgment properly and tries to interpret it in his for whatever, whatever case he is going to represent then obviously whatever interest was there initially will get multiplied to whatever level so that is also very important so that that will also be actually helpful for all the people who have just started their practice of course parthas sir thank you so much you know you have just covered the whole judgment and more pointing towards the registration process and uh, you know you have covered the whole major the three uh, significant judgments uh, which you have quoted which is the, of course the neel kamal uh, realtors new tech developers promoters and the bombay high court judgment which mohammed oh, zain khan mohammed zain khan yes uh, definitely so thank you so much parthas sir for taking out time thank uh, you just one again one small request to me that uh, like because there are many people who are just starting into practice and are into the litigation process uh i think so your if in, any kind of queries or any kind of you know uh, difficulties they face during litigation because again like you mentioned it's a technical uh, field as such and see because you have been practicing the terms rejoinder the terms filing of when do we file the affidavit when is it needed people are still very confused in that sense when you are practicing so of course in that sense if you all have any kind of queries uh, parthas sir is always available he will be there to guide you all if you require most As welcome most welcome yes, yes. a sincere vote of thanks to you sir uh, for Thank taking you. out time and you know addressing the significant judgments and everything uh, with you. this uh, we'll be concluding today's session uh, and we'll be meeting again on monday so just to remind you there is uh, remain two session which is there one is on monday and the next is on uh, wednesday and uh, we'll be concluding with a basic registration course on next wednesday so by then uh, if you all have any kind of queries regarding the whole registration process or any kind of difficulties you all have faced personally uh, the next wednesday lecture will be the last lecture so wherein we'll be dealing with all the you know faqs and uh, major significant questions which pertain to uh, rera and if you all have also any queries you all can definitely ask us in that session uh, with this we conclude today's uh, session Uh, thank you so much parthas sir once thank again thank you very much and thanks for each and every participant who have given the patient here to me thank you sir thank you so much yes thank you participants for being with us and joining this course and taking active part similarly the presenter who has taken enough pain to present the session today panelists and the participants who have made it very interactive i request you any questions are there you can always email to us my email address is rsprabhu13@gmail.com and if you want you can send the message on whatsapp which of course is in the description box still you can take out the number 9820106766 and you can reach out to us any time and any new topic that you want to have a discussion on prabhu se khas baat or the courses physical or even on zoom on any time on online we will be very happy to organize that you can be a presenter you can be a faculty you can be organizing part of the organizing committee you can also learn all these are open the purpose is to empower every chartered accountant to enter into new area of practice new area of profession so that you are able to build your profession in a better way thank you very much